Hi, this is Joni Swedland. Welcome to the Strong Women, Stronger World podcast, where each episode we interview different leaders to help accelerate your leadership learning, challenge you to take risks, to advance your own career, and teach you how to lead from inside out. My comments and insights are based on my own experience, which span a 27-year career in global management consulting, including 18 as a partner. This podcast is meant to inspire and empower you to action. It is time to step into your power. The world needs more women leaders. Together, we are strong. Strong women, stronger world. Our topic today is mindset with our special guest, Julia Penzler. Julia is a scaling coach, mindset expert, and a best-selling author. She is the founder of The Million Dollar Women, a New York City-based social venture, which has helped thousands of women entrepreneurs scale up their businesses. She also built the number one language teaching company for kids called Little Pem into a multi-million dollar business. Julia is the author of Million Dollar Women. It's an Amazon bestseller, and it was also the winner of the Axiom Business Book Award. And I actually have it here. Oh, <laughs> it's awesome. great. Show and tell. I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and her most recent book is Go Big Now, Eight Essential Mindset Practices to Overcome Any Obstacle and Reach Your Goals. So she is helping women get and keep the go big mindset. And she interviews her guests and shares go big tips on her live show, CEO Check-In on IGTV and on the Million, Million Dollar Mind podcast. You can sign up for her blog post and download her eBooks at juliapensler.com and follow Julia on social media at Julia Pensler. Welcome, Julia, to our show. Thanks, Joni. I'm so excited to be here with you. Oh, it is such a pleasure. And, you know, Julia, in addition to, you know, her amazing introduction, she has also been my personal coach and mentor. So I am so excited that she's on the show today. Well, it is an honor and I've loved working with you. Like most people who coach others, you are also an amazing person to coach. <laughs> so I'm sure everyone listening has already gotten such incredible value from you. And I'm excited to talk about mindset today because I know it's a topic we both care about a lot. Oh, very much so. So just getting to the point, I think it'd be great for you to give a little bit of your background and your career journey that led you to focus on mindset. Yes. I, well, I started a company when my first son was born called Little Pim, the one you mentioned before, the language teaching for young children. And it was really because I had grown up bilingual in French and English and thought that was the best thing my parents ever did for me. And I wanted my son to be bilingual. And I found out there was nothing on the market to teach little kids a second language. So like many women entrepreneurs, I was like, well, I'll solve this problem that I have and I can maybe also solve it for some other parents and started the first language teaching company for kids. But the truth is, Joni, I had not gone to business school. I did not have a finance background. I had a very creative background. I went to Yale for undergrad. I studied film with a minor in women's studies. I remember my mother saying, what are you going to do with that? A minor in women's studies. <laughs> we laugh about that now. because That's my entire career practically now. Um, but in any case, I, I was just very passionate about helping other parents be their children's first language teacher. But I got to a place where the company where we had some success, we were at about 400,000 in revenues. We were getting written up in Business Week and 100 entrepreneurs to watch. And Angelina Jolie was using our product to teach her children French, like all kinds of good things were happening. But underneath that, I was feeling exhausted and burnt out. And like, I didn't really see a path to growing the business to be the kind of big successful business I always wanted to run. I didn't start that business to be a little side hustle. I wanted it to be, you know, a national or international brand. And I hit this wall where I couldn't get past that 400,000 in revenues. And that was where I had to have a big mindset shift about what does it mean to grow a successful company and to be the CEO 
of a fast growing company. I also needed a lot of business skills, but I could not get those business skills without the mindset shift. And really, if you fast forward to today, you know, some eight, nine years later, that's where that all started. Wow. Well, this is what a wonderful journey to lead you to this point and to help so many other women. So let's get right to this around what is a big a go big mindset and how do we get one of these? Well, that was one of the big things I had to get in order to grow my company. And just to actually make sure folks know where that all ended up, because it did make such a big difference to do that mindset work and then to get the business skills. We did grow Little Pim into being a multi-million dollar company. And we had a team of 10 and we were in 22 countries and 25 awards. And that was all fantastic. But then I found out that very few women ever run a multi-million dollar business like I was doing. And that's where I became passionate about helping other women grow their businesses and realized that one of the main things they needed help with was this go big mindset, which I will define in a moment. Because yeah. look, Joni, we both work with women. Women are so yeah. smart and so driven and so hardworking, right? But that is not what leads to success. We have been sold this bill of goods that if you just work super hard, right? And I believe actually all mm -hmm. minorities are sold this bill of goods. We have about 25% of our million dollar women community is women of color. And they often tell me, oh yeah, I was raised on just work twice as hard as everybody else. And I know that's how it was in my family, but that is not what leads to success. What leads to success is adopting a go big mindset, which I define as a set of beliefs that allows you to stay positive, overcome any obstacle and reach your goals. And this is what people are doing who are highly successful. And in order to write the book, Go Big Now, I went and studied what are successful leaders, CEOs, politicians, Olympic athletes, what kind of mindset practices are they doing? Because they're all doing mindset practices. They just may not talk about it, or you might not have looked or listened for those answers. But I went listening and found some really incredible things that I shared in, in the book that just came out. Wow, that's so powerful. And to think about what you just described with so many women that are working so hard. And, you know, I think we've just been raised that way in, in many cases that you just work hard. And what you're describing is this complete shift. Not only, you know, we can work hard, but we can work smart. And yeah. the mindset peace and and that shift tell us a little bit more how that worked for you yeah. well it's so much about valuing yourself right and and i know it's a big buzzword now of you know know yourself worth and you know some of that can sort of sound like blah blah but there is something very real and actionable in there in the sense that you know one of my big messages in million dollar women my first book was to embrace that you are your greatest asset and that is not just in a theoretical fashion because once you've really embraced that then you start realizing, wait a minute, if I'm the one fixing the broken links on the website and answering every customer service email and preparing all of our you know, uh, images for social media, that is a terrible use of my time, right? If I'm truly my company's greatest asset, or even if you don't own a company, perhaps you're an executive, right? Then mm -hmm. you should be outsourcing and delegating. Everyone needs to be outsourcing and delegating so that they can focus on their, what I call their genius work, which is what you love to do and what you're great at. But for some reason, women tend to be not that good at this. And that's something you know, you are, you know, are trying to shift and I am trying to shift with my books and my coaching so that we can elevate ourselves, not to a place where we're you know, high and mighty, but where we can honor the amazing work we were put on this earth to do. And that's really what the Go Big Mindset is all about. I love this so much. The fact that just thinking about we are our own greatest asset and to treat that asset in a way that would get the biggest bang for the buck. So the idea of outsourcing and freeing up time so that we can really focus on what you called our genius work. I love that. And that just that makes it just makes sense, um, you know, to apply that mindset. But you're so right. I think that as as women and entrepreneurs, that there are times when we just try to do it all. Yes. And then it leads to burnout. Right. And so you have so many talented, amazing women who either experience burnout or they get the, the, the monetary rewards, but realize that they're not happy. 
right? Because they've sacrificed yes. relationships along the way, or they've sacrificed their health. They've gained weight. They're maybe smoking or drinking in order to make up for the stress they're under. I've seen this a lot. And so I think really peeling it back and saying, okay, what are my goals? What do I love to do? What's my genius work? And then how do I protect that? That's a lot of what the book is about. I have an entire chapter on how to be self-compassionate, for instance. Because look, it is a personality type to be driven. You know, I'll be very clear, the book is not written for people who want to sit on the couch and eat potato chips. If you want to sit on the couch and eat potato chips, this is not your book because this is a book for people who want to do big, exciting things. And if you want to do big, exciting things, there are going to be obstacles and there are going to be days that are incredibly hard. And you're going to have to know how to manage your time and your energy and your mindset. And I feel like that's the part we get the least training in. Like, Joni, what is the motto or the slogan of Nike? What's the Nike slogan? Just do it. Right. Just do it. Right. And we can all cite that and we get excited. It's like, okay, I'm going to just do it. But anyone who has reached success, whether it's in business, politics, sports, knows that just do it, getting off go, is about 10% of success. Mm. It's the other 90% that matters, no. which is how do you overcome the obstacles? How do you stay motivated? How do you, you know, find a new way forward when things don't go as you planned? How do you protect your own vital energy and do your genius work? And that's the part we get the least help with. And really why I wrote the book, because I was privileged to get to study with some of the greatest mindset teachers of today over a period of about 10, 15 years that I've been studying this. And I looked back at everything I learned and realized, really, it was about eight critical things that I learned across these thousands of dollars and thousands of hours spent with these top teachers. And so that's what I presented in the book is the eight essential mindset practices to overcome any obstacle and reach your goals as are already being practiced by top CEOs, leaders and successful people in all walks of life. Well. That makes it easy for the rest of us, for sure. <laughs> but, but, you don't even You don't even have to go to an ashram in India, right? Because <laughs> like, we hear mindset, and it's such a buzzword, right? Like, what does that mean? And what do I do about it? When well, you might have heard, oh, I should have a growth mindset, or I should have a powerful mindset, or a resilient mindset. But most people don't know how to go about doing that. So this is kind of that roadmap. Well, and it, what's fascinating to me is that that mindset makes up 90% of that initiative and what you're trying to do. So when you think about it, I mean, this, that's everything. I mean, your mindset matters. It really does. It's the foundation, right? Wow. We always say in Million Dollar Women, it's the foundation on which you build your mansion, right? And just as you would never yeah. build a $30 million mansion on quicksand, why would we be trying to pursue our big ambitious dreams without having a solid mindset because the truth is you can be your greatest cheerleader and you can you know catapult yourself to success but you can also be your greatest saboteur right and as women we are so good at this i mean if anyone spoke to us the way we spoke to ourselves <laughs> we would say i don't want to be your friend anymore julia you bring out such an important point because you know we all have that inner chatter in our heads and sometimes we get these negative thoughts that come in that all of a sudden we start thinking oh I don't know if I can do that or, oh, you know, am I smart enough or am I good enough or whatever that enough thing is, how do we address this? Because if mindset is so important in us moving forward to achieve our goals and overcome obstacles, how do we shift those thoughts? Yes. Well, the very first thing is what everyone is doing right now, which is acknowledging that mindset is something you can work on by listening to a podcast like this, by starting to read books. You know, you can read Go Big Now. You can read other books. I actually put my 10 favorite mindset books in Go Big Now so people can continue their journey. And you and I both know it's not a once and done kind of thing, no. right? It's like a lifelong journey. But once you start, you feel the benefits right away. And I think that's why I got hooked on both improving my own mindset and teaching others to do the same, because these are things you can put into action immediately. The minute you read, you know, like for instance, my first chapter is called Mind the Gap. And Mind the Gap is the first mindset practice I teach. And it's really the most elemental one to master, which is understanding the fact that there's a space you can create between what happens to you and the meaning you make of it. Now, for most people, they don't believe that space exists, right? Someone doesn't email them back or someone, you know, doesn't walks away at a party. Oh, they don't like me anymore. I've been rejected, right? You start making all this meaning. 
But mind the gap, I borrowed it actually from the London tube because, you know, when you're standing there waiting for the tube, yeah. they're saying, mind the gap, mind the gap. So I use that as a funny reminder to myself, right, to mind the gap. And look, I just used it the other day, Joni. I, I was interviewed for television and I gave a you know hour long interview. I thought it went well. And then the day came and went that it was supposed to show on TV. And, you know, of course, my mind went to that place of, well, did they not like it? Did I say the wrong thing? Right? <laughs> Why didn't it run? What was wrong with the interview? And then I had to just say, OK, stop. Right. You're creating meaning. Create some space yeah. between what happened and the meaning you make of it. And mind the gap. It's a three part process I teach with that mindset practice. Step one is what's the meaning am I making of it? Step two is, can I create a different meaning, right? And step three mm -hmm. is, what would be a more empowering interpretation? Because there is no such thing as truth with a capital T. We're all just interpreting everything that happens to us all day long and thinking it's truth, by the way. But yeah. when you've done this mindset work, you can actually catch yourself in the moment, having these negative thoughts, having these reactions that are going to lead you to retreat instead of go forward, and you can change the narrative. So in my case, I thought, well, the only fact I have is that it didn't run the, the show. So why don't I reach out to her and find out why it didn't run? <laughs> you know, and it turns yes. out it got bumped for some reason and then it ran two weeks later and everything was fine. So good thing, right? I didn't let that take me down this whole rabbit hole. Yes. Of, oh, I, there was something wrong with me. But I'm just sharing that personal example because I know we all do this every single day. And without mindset training, you wouldn't even question it. It would just seem like a fact. Yes, yes. This resonates just at a soul level. Um, I know in working with my clients, um, we talk a lot about assumptions, these stories we make up in our heads. And that's yes. exactly what you're talking about, because we all have our different sets of experiences that we bring into situations and through life. And those lenses we wear are not the same that others are wearing, nor do they experience the same thing we experience in the moment. Right. So I and then we can wind up putting blinders on ourselves because look, we're both coaches. Yeah. We help women to realize their full selves and, and live that bigger version of their dreams, right? And the yeah. truth is we all have a narrative running that is unconscious about who we are and what we're meant to do in yes. the world. And until you can, one, realize that's not truth, that's just a narrative you've constructed unconsciously, and two, have the tools to dismantle it, and then three, have the tools to build a new one that serves the bright, beautiful, amazing future you're trying to build, you will stay stuck, right, with those blinders on. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was so lucky to have coaches to help me do that multiple times. And I've now shared in the book the methods for doing that, like chapter three is called Set Your Go Big Goal and Rewrite Your Story. And it's exactly what we're talking about, how to rewrite that narrative. It is so powerful, change your narrative. So as we are thinking as leaders, okay, we want to go change our narrative. Yes. Can you help walk our listeners and viewers through how they would go about changing their narrative? Yes. Well, step one, as I've already mentioned, is realizing it's not the truth with a capital T. And at the beginning of the book, I do explain how each of us has something in our brain called the RAS, the reticular activating system, which filters every single bit of information coming at us and creates an entirely different reality than anyone else. And it's kind of freeing when you learn that because you realize, oh, I'm just inventing my reality and everyone else is inventing their reality. So you can be a little less hung up on what other people think of you or what are you supposed to be doing, right? And start creating your own destiny. The second piece is to realize what is that programming? I like using the metaphor of shining a flashlight on your unconscious because ultimately the unconscious drives the show, right? We think we're making these rational decisions every day, but we have all this invisible programming from our childhood, from our ex-husband, from you know our first boss, all this amalgam of voices that has programmed our unconscious. And once we shine that flashlight, we can take a look at these programs and say, hey, is that still serving me, right? One of my coaches said, how's that working for you, right? If it's working for you, keep doing it. But if you're not getting the results you want, you're not making the kind of money you want, you're not living the big life you want, you're not doing the teaching you say you want to be doing, well, then maybe it's time for a new program. So then that's the other piece of the book is how do you write that new program, write that new story, and then start executing on it. And the book is very actionable 
and practical because you know me I'm in our coaching, right? It's like mindset can be very woo-woo, but I'm like the least woo-woo mindset coach <laughs> ever created because I'm a business person, right? So I want to know, okay, well, how do I do it? And what are the results going to be? And that is where the book, you know, I think can help people make really big changes really quickly. Oh, great. Um, and I love that. I love that whole idea of shining the flashlight onto the unconscious and just bringing it to the light. That's right? just so beautiful. Hey, and I don't know about you, Joni, but during the pandemic lockdown, I binge watched almost all of Marie Kondo. <laughs> I think I did watch it all. There were like six episodes. And sometimes I think of this as like Marie Kondoing your unconscious. <laughs> right? Oh, I love that. Right? Did you ever watch her? Do you know what she does? Yes. You know, what yes. she does is right, she picks yes. up the piece of clothing and says, does this still give me joy and if it yes. doesn't she thanks it and she says goodbye to it and gives it yes. away which i did do with my closet got rid of a lot of old stuff but we can do the same thing with our programming right because maybe mm -hmm. your parents always said to you you should be the first one to arrive and the last one to leave at work and that's how you're going to get to success mm -hmm. so you worked your tail off and now you're like a junior manager but you know what you're not happy you're working these super long hours you don't actually see a path to rising the corporate ladder. Well, maybe you need to take a look at that belief, right? And say, thank you, you got me here. Here I am at this big job making, you know, six figures or something like that, but you're not gonna get me where I wanna go. So thank you, say goodbye, and then choose the belief that's going to get you to the next place you wanna go. And this is something usually you can't do unless you hire a mindset coach or, you know, take a five day workshop but the book teaches you how to do that. And that was really my calling in writing it is making these tools accessible for everyone. I think that's so helpful because we get so attached to our own blinders and just having those tools and access to individuals who can help us to let go of those blinders when they're not serving us. I think that's just such a, a, a great thing to offer. Um, okay, so you mentioned the pandemic. I'm curious to know from your perspective, how either your mindset or how you've observed some of your other clients' mindsets, how has that shifted during the pandemic? Well, I think the pandemic was like a global mindset test for the entire world. I mean, before the pandemic, right, I think business people, which is the world I move in, you know, thought of mindset as a bit of a nice to have, right? Okay, if you have some extra time, work on mindset. But really what matters is, you know, finances, marketing, managing people, not realizing that mindset is at the foundation of all of those things and of all of our big plans. But when the pandemic hit and everyone was forced to exist in this highly mm. anxious, stressful environment, we saw that the people who had a powerful mindset were the people who were able to keep thriving, not just surviving, yes. but thriving, right? We had women in our community who had already done a lot of mindset work who were able to completely transform their businesses, you know, within a couple of months from offline to online, you know, help their teams and their, their, the women who work for them to support their families during that time take care of loved ones, you just do Herculean things, which if you don't have a powerful mindset, it was very easy during that time to really just want to pull up the covers, you know, literally or virtually, right? And say, let's wait till it's all over. Right. And people woke up, you know, six months, nine months in, like, yeah. oh my God, it's not over yet. And now I have to figure out what to do with myself. You know, whether that's just managing your mental health or literally how do I keep my business going or how do I keep, you know, getting clients. You know, absolutely. I think that being able to pivot in those types of situations with your mindset, I think is, is super important. Um, and I don't know about you, Joni, but I think there's a silver lining now of having lived through this terrible period we all lived through, which is that talking about mindset and talking about yeah. mental health and mental resilience has become more normal and accepted. I know on my team, yeah. we did a mental health check-in every single day because you couldn't just jump into a meeting without finding out, well, did someone in your family just get coronavirus? You know, or one, one woman who worked for me was very anxious about going outside. And so I had to kind of check in with her every day see how she was doing but I don't know that we will go back to the yeah. place where we think well work is work and how you feel mentally and in your mindset is not relevant here that was never true in the first place and I think now wellness mindset and business have met yeah. in a very powerful and positive way that I hope yes. will be lasting and enduring I'd love to hear your thoughts on that yeah no I'm with you a hundred percent and I think one of the things you're describing is empathy and bringing that into our leadership. And I also think about where 
you know, there are many um, employees that are still working remotely, but are, are at the, the precipice of being invited back into the office. And there's a lot going on emotionally within, you know, each of us, because everyone's experience was, again, we have our lenses, we've gone That's through right. our unique experiences, we knew people who died or who didn't, or, you know, what have you. And so being what you just described by doing the, the mental health check-ins, by bringing empathy as leaders, and helping right now around mindset with, you know, individuals that report to you as you know, we begin the transition back into the workplace is going to be super important. Yes. And I think we all have an important role to play, you and I and everyone listening, in bringing mindset into the conversation so that yes. people can acknowledge where they're at on that. Even just saying to someone like, how's your mindset doing today? Just like you might ask someone how they're feeling in their body. Right. A lot of what I teach in the book is building mindset core strength, just like you'd go to the gym to build your you know, physical core strength. You can build mindset core strength. Yes. And that I believe in doing that, we just become more resilient as well as leaders. Um, and right, enjoy well, our lives more. How about putting yes, that out there? That's, that's a goal, true. right? <laughs> that's true. Okay. So Julia, I'm actually, I'm curious, and I'm sure some of our listeners are curious as well. Have you observed any differences in mindset between women and men? You know, to date, I have mainly been coaching women through Million Dollar Women. We've coached thousands of women to grow their businesses. And if anyone listening is needing help with that, do reach out to us at scalewithjulia.com, S-C-A-L-E, or on my website, juliapimsler.com. But the, well, I'm just now starting to work with men. Having written Go Big Now, I have you know men reaching out to me. The book is for men and women. It's for entrepreneurs and for corporate. It's really for anyone with a big dream who wants to get that other 90%, right? That they're not yes. getting anywhere else. Of how do you set the goal, stay on track for the goal, not get thrown off when things go wrong and you know get to your, to your dreams. I have noticed that everyone, men and women, suffer from limiting beliefs, which is a, a term you know, I'm sure you're familiar with and, yes. and some of your listeners too. But for those who aren't, a limiting belief is simply an unconscious belief you have about your ability to achieve something and it's usually manifest as something you don't have. So when people ask me, well, how do I know if I have a limiting belief? Well, if you look around your life at you know, the amount of money you have, the amount of love you have, what kind of impact you think you're making, your health, wherever you see something lacking, wherever you don't have what you want, there's a limiting belief driving that because otherwise you would have it already. There are only two types of beliefs, empowering and limiting. And everything you have in your life that you are happy with, the amount of love, the amount of health, the amount of wealth, everything, that comes from empowering beliefs, right? Like I often share that my mother used to say to me when I was a little girl, Julia, whatever you do, you will succeed at. She just said that all the time, like it was a fact. I thought everyone's mother said that to them. And you know, while that's not true, I've failed at plenty of things, it gave me this empowering belief that I could try hard things, I could take risks because whatever I was gonna do, I was probably gonna succeed at. And you know, I've, I've failed a lot, but I've succeeded a lot, and I do owe it to that empowering belief. Now, a limiting belief might say, you know, be careful about putting yourself out there, you might make a fool of yourself, right? Be careful yeah. about yeah. being the know-it-all. Everybody hates a know-it-all, right? Like, I'm a loud person. My first company was called Big Mouth Productions. Like, I've always been loud. <laughs> And I did have a limiting belief for a while that being like bold or loud, as, as I used to think about it, as a woman was a, was a bad thing. And mm -hmm. I had to do some mindset work to realize like, no, bold is beautiful, right? And, and to yes. own that. But this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Limiting and empowering beliefs can mess you up in business, but they can also just impact your, your sense of joy and pride and, and who you are in the world. So that's mm -hmm. something men and women suffer from. I... I think that that is so helpful to share around the limiting beliefs and really flipping those to empowering beliefs. And as our listeners are thinking about their own dreams and goals, I'm curious, just given this go big mindset, are there any dreams that are too big? Or is there a thing such as dreaming too big? Or how would you encourage people in this way to really be bringing those empowering beliefs and to really go for you know the things that they really want in their lives yes well i would say most people suffer from not thinking big enough 
<laughs> not yeah. thinking too big, right? And it's funny, as we talk, I have above my desk, I just framed it and put it up there, the famous Marianne Williamson quote. So I'll just read it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small doesn't serve the world. Yes. Amen, <laughs> right? Thank you, Mary yes. Williamson. Go that big. Is, that, is, that is a quote that I have gone back to time and time again. And I think uh -huh. if anybody listening, if that resonates, you know, it's time to sit down and map out your go big goals and dreams. You know, I shared in the book that if you write down your goals, 42% more likelihood that they happen. And actually, I do have a, a 10 page workbook that goes with the book. It's free when you buy the book. You can download it from my website at juliapimzer.com. Because when you do this work, when you take the time to shine the flashlight on your unconscious and decide where am I trying to go and do I have the right mindset tools to get me there? And if not, to do the work in my book and in the books of others, right? That's all available out there. It's just been a little hard to access. And then make those big shifts. I mean, look at someone like, you know, Oprah, who was born incredibly mm -hmm. impoverished in the South and at age nine was sexually assaulted by a member of her family, was put in a mental institution by the time she was 13. I mean, she was not on the fast track to success, right? And she just had such a powerful mindset that she decided very early in life, I am meant to help millions of people and I am gonna catapult myself into that vision I have of myself. And there are so many other stories like that, some of which I share in the book and everyone listening you know, probably has their own favorite like that, someone who overcame incredible odds. So if you're sitting at home thinking, well, I, I don't know, I think my dream might be too big, right? Think of Oprah, think of I shared Peter Dinklage, you know, who was born four foot two and then became the greatest heartthrob of Game of Thrones, you know, in the, in the role of Tyrion Lannister. He just decided early on, no, I'm not taking the parts as like the funny dwarf. No, uh -uh. I'm gonna be a romantic lead. And for years, people were like, no, you're crazy. You're four foot two. You're going to be the funny sidekick. But mm. look what happened. Did you ever watch Game of Thrones, Joni? I unfortunately have not. Oh, oh my gosh, I know. Right now I have something new to binge. So. <laughs> yes, well, anybody listening who has watched Game of Thrones knows what I'm talking about. The camera loves this guy. And he it. is the sexy lead, right? And so, again, how can we get in our own way? But how can we do the opposite of that? and have the big dreams and do the work yeah. to get the obstacles out of the way so that we can get there. Yes, I love this, dream big. <laughs> so Julia, before we let you go, we always ask our guests to answer a keystone question. What makes you feel strong? Well, we have a practice that we do in my community and anyone listening who's part of my community will know because they've heard me talk about this over and over again and it's called tracking your wins and this makes you feel very powerful and very strong and you know we're all so good at carrying around when something bad happens someone makes the tiniest little comment about something you didn't do well in a meeting and you're going to think about it for five months right but every day we're receiving compliments and accolades that just go through mm -hmm. us like a sieve right we're like a sieve for the praise and then we're like a bowl for the criticism so what i recommend people do and i do it myself is i have something in my notes just called wins. And anytime I receive any kind of praise, I put it in there so that in a time when I feel like I need that boost, I can just read through pages and pages of people whose lives I've impacted and reconnect with that sense of power and impact. Because we're all human. We all have moments where we just feel like, why am I doing this again? <laughs> right? yeah. or, is anybody listening? Or why am I making my 10th podcast episode and going live once a week? And <laughs> right, is, is the tree falling in the forest? So in those times, it's so helpful to have all that written down. And so I highly recommend anyone who's looking to get started today on a cool mindset best practice, create notes in your phone, have it sync with your desktop, and next time you get an email, someone saying, hey, great job in that meeting. I love what you said. I'm going to use that. Throw it in your wins and it'll make you feel strong on the day you need it. 
Julia, that is such a beautiful practice. And I can't thank you enough for joining us today and sharing your tips and insights. You are just such a positive light and energy in this world. And um, I'm so grateful. And I know the listeners are grateful as well for you spending your your time with us and sharing um, your wisdom with us I today. I loved it, Joni. And thank you for all you're doing to help women to access the bigger version of themselves and girls with your camps. <laughs> so I am delighted that I've been able to work with you a little bit. And I know that the best is yet to come. You are on a very rapid upward trajectory. <laughs> and I'm excited to be part of it. So thank you for having me on. Oh, it's such a pleasure. And I also want to thank our listeners and our viewers for joining today. And I hope that you are taking away your own ideas to go big with your mindset and lean into your leadership. Thank you for listening. If you are interested in supporting this content, please hit the subscribe button. This will help to bring much needed funding to bring quality programming to our listeners like you. Your support is greatly appreciated. We encourage you to leave comments. If you have suggestions for leadership topics, please provide those in the comments and we will strive to address those in upcoming episodes. It is time to step into your power. The world needs your leadership. Together we are strong. Strong women, stronger world.